the European Parliament has marked its 70th anniversary. During its history, it has transformed from a coal and steel community to its current democratically elected body. There's more trouble in store for the global economy, as the OECD's latest forecast predicts slower growth in the year ahead. Decades after its initial creation, leaders in Strasbourg have marked the 70th anniversary of the founding of the European Parliament. The landmark anniversary was led by the Parliament's president, Roberta Metzola. Good morning, dear colleagues. I am proud of our achievements, of our way, of Europe being a beacon of the defense of democracy, of the way that we have never been indifferent of how we have never looked away. Europe is the answer to so many of the questions our people ask of us. It is a way of life and a way of living. It was no coincidence that the EU flag was raised over her son after so many months of brutal occupation. It is because it symbolizes hope, courage and belief. The current assembly, which sits in both Strasbourg and Brussels, grew out of the European Coal and Steel Community's first meeting. It brought together national representatives appointed by European member states. The chamber later became the European Parliament, and since 1979, its members are elected by universal suffrage every five years. Ukrainian government has been offering people in the recently liberated city of Kherson, which remains mostly without electricity and running water, free evacuations to regions with better infrastructure as well as free accommodation there. The Southern Front has been the recent focus of efforts for both Russian and Ukrainian forces before Ukraine has liberated the West Bank of Kherson, including the regional capital. Now, let's take a look at the last piece of territory that Russian forces occupy in the region of Mykolaiv, the Kinburn Spit. A Ukrainian official acknowledged that Ukrainian forces are conducting a military operation there. This is this area, a location which would allow Ukrainian forces to better conduct potential operations on the East Bank in Kherson region. The Kinbur Spit is only four kilometers across the strait from Ochakiv and allows for control of the entrance to the Dnipro and southern Bug rivers, as well as the Mykolaiv and Kherson city ports. Russian forces used positions on the Kinburn Spit to conduct routine missile and artillery strikes on Ukrainian positions in Ochakiv, southern Mykolaiv region, and other areas along the Ukrainian-controlled Black Sea coast. Now, control of the Kinbur Spit would allow Ukrainian forces to relieve Russian strikes on the Ukrainian-controlled Black Sea coast, increase naval activity in this area, and conduct potential operations to cross to the East Bank in Kherson region under significantly less Russian artillery fire compared to crossing the Dnipro River there. Along the East Bank of Dnipro, Russian forces continued to strengthen their defense and build additional lines deep inside Russian-occupied territory from where, after their withdrawal, they keep attacking Ukrainian positions and shelling liberated areas, including the city of Kherson. There are troubled times ahead for the global economy. In its latest forecast, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development is predicting slower growth in the year ahead, with only slight recovery in 2024. The West will be particularly affected. GDP in the euro area and growth in the US are expected to decline to 0.5%. The global outlook is set at 2.2% and GDP is predicted to rebound to a modest 1.4% in Europe by 2024. The OECD says Russia's war in Ukraine is the single biggest factor in the slowdown. The world is facing substantial headwinds and substantial risks over the horizon. Uh, in this challenging environment, we need to confront the crisis with well-designed policy responses as well as with international cooperation in order to overcome this difficult situation and pave the way for a better future. Soaring high inflation is dragging on economies around the world. Its effect will only weaken slightly. In the euro area, inflation next year is expected to drop to 6.8% from this year's high. 
However, the incremental drop in prices in the U.S. may continue, with inflation falling to 3.5. Inflationary pressures have, have really uh, intensified and became a lot more pervasive. And you can see that in many countries of the world, you have more than 50, 60, 70 percent of all goods and services of their economies that right now are growing more than 6 percent a year. So inflation has become more entrenched and intensified, but also more broad-based. Central banks are expected to maintain high interest rates to combat inflation, which is largely fueled by soaring energy costs caused by President Putin's war. As far as the OECD is concerned, economies will remain vulnerable to further shocks and even a deepening energy crisis. China is facing what authorities are calling its most severe COVID test as it records its first deaths in six months. Three people died in Beijing over the weekend, bringing the country's official death toll to more than 5,200. The latest fatalities have plunged parts of the city back into lockdown. China is the last major economy still sticking to a no-tolerance policy on the virus and has enforced snap lockdowns, mass testing and quarantines as the rest of the world adjusts to living with COVID. Colombia's government and the leftist National Liberation Army have resumed formal talks in Venezuela for the first time since they were suspended in 2019. The ELN is the last recognized rebel group in the country. The talks are a push by President Gustav Petro, who in August became Colombia's first ever leftist leader and has vowed to end violence by armed groups. In a joint statement, the parties have agreed to resume the dialogue process with full political and ethical will. There was agony and ecstasy in Qatar as Saudi Arabia pulled off a major World Cup upset to beat Argentina 2-1 in the opening game of Group C. Two-time world champions Argentina had looked set to make it 37 games unbeaten when a Lionel Messi penalty gave the South Americans an early lead. But in the second half, Saudi Arabia came out fighting, netting twice in just 10 minutes to turn the game on its head. Argentina couldn't mount a comeback and the Saudis held on for a famous win. Legendary Cuban singer-songwriter Pablo Milanes has died at the age of 79. According to his representatives, Milanes was hospitalized in Madrid after falling ill in the Spanish capital. He had been undergoing treatment for cancer. Milanes was a founder of Nueva Trova, an emerging genre of music in the 60s, just after the Cuban Revolution of 1959. Inspired by protest songs from America's civil rights movement, Nueva Trova combines storytelling with folk music to communicate Cuba's social problems. As a result, he was lauded as a cultural icon during Fidel Castro's reign, incorporating politics into his music, alongside musicians Silvio Rodriguez and Noel Nicola. In his early years, Milanes began his career singing on local radio and television contests. In early November, he was forced to cancel concerts due to his deteriorating health. Rural Donegal, in the northwest of Ireland, a place home to wetlands that store peat. Across the nation, one in seven households still rely on turf to heat their homes. The Irish government, however, seeks to cut down peat cutting as part of its climate plans. But that move has been met with resistance amid soaring energy costs. Livestock farmer Mickey O'Donnell used to cut peat for a living. He sees peat as a way to keep costs down. And two on the year, you mean, and this, this is what it cost me for the whole winter? To yeah, the whole winter, yeah. That's it. And the summer, yeah. Yeah? Wow. So, with the current energy prices, this is uh, still affordable? Look, very, very cheap. Yeah. If you do the work yourself, it's, it's a lot cheaper. Bogs where peat is stored are also a vital source for capturing carbon from the air. And if left alone, it can be stored for thousands of years. But once removed from the ground, that gain is lost. The Green Party are spearheading a ban on commercial peat sales. MP Marco Kosasig says that he wants to be allies with peat cutters. The same skills that were put to use in turf harvesting, the people who know the bogs best, that's actually the same skills as we can use for re-wetting of the bog lands as well. This should actually be a huge opportunity for people to create jobs in places that otherwise don't have employment opportunities. Ireland's climate message is increasingly resonating with younger generations, 
who are calling for energy transitions to resources like wind energy, 